If you've traveled through the Southern United States, you've seen them. Confederate battle flags strewn all along the interstate system. In South Carolina, in North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, Virginia, and beyond, there are tons of flags placed strategically along major interstate routes, loudly and proudly identifying that part of the country with its deep and abiding ties to the losing side of the Civil War. I decided to spend a little time digging into the history of how those flags got there. Turns out they're all on private property that's been bought, leased, or deeded to a well funded special interest group who's been fighting for over a century to keep Confederate propaganda alive and well in the U.S. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. If you know anything about this country's fraught history with race relations, you know these monuments to America's lost cause didn't just pop up by accident. On Flag Day, a creator named Kev on stage posted a video showing a massive Confederate flag displayed just off of I-85 in South Carolina. His comment section was filled with references to other massive Confederate flags situated just off major interstates, clearly placed there to provide the highest possible visibility. Now, we've all heard the lost cause rhetoric that claims that embracing the Confederate battle flag and other Confederate symbols is not about hate. It's about heritage. We don't agree with the whole slavery thing, but we should be able to honor our fallen soldiers without being labeled as racist. And it's true. If 150 years after your great, great, great grandfather gave his life for the cause of preserving Negro slavery, let's read that again directly from the Confederate Constitution, the Cornerstone speech, and the Articles of Secession pause if you need to. If 150 years after your great-great-great-grandfather gave his life for the cause of preserving Negro slavery, you still feel compelled to lay a wreath at his gravesite and light a candle in his honor on Memorial Day, you should certainly be able to do that without being labeled a racist and a traitor. Only, what's been happening for the last 150 years is a bit more insidious than that. In the 20 years or so following the end of the Civil War, most monuments to the dead were appropriately modest. They honored those who had died fighting valiantly for the right to preserve Negro slavery, and they were mostly funded by the families of the fallen and veterans groups. But around 1877, after the end of the Civil War, the U.S. entered a period called Reconstruction. The South had negotiated to have all of the Union soldiers removed, and the era of widespread racial segregation known as the Jim Crow era began. This is when you started to see all of the gaudy monuments to the Confederacy begin to pop up, and the Confederate battle flag took on a whole new meaning. Suddenly, newly established groups Groups like the Daughters of the Confederacy were rewriting textbooks to make sure that Southern soldiers were portrayed in schools as heroes and that slavery was minimized as the primary cause of the South's secession. This is what's known as lost cause propaganda, and it's pretty widespread throughout the American South, even today. Tons of monuments and Confederate battle flags started to spring up during the Jim Crow era. Then the Civil Rights Movement came along in the 1950s and 60s, and the whole Confederate flag monuments movement really exploded. Many of these monuments were erected during this time in absolute defiance of the Civil Rights Movement. It was also the centennial of the Civil War, so there were more monuments than ever. After a point, it became apparent that Southerners weren't really honoring the dead as much as they were honoring the cause that they fought for. But what's the deal with all those obscenely massive Confederate flags off interstates recently? Well, it turns out that they're all related to something called the sesquicentennial, or the 150th anniversary of the attempted secession of the South and the start of the Civil War. That anniversary happened in 2011, and most of these so-called freeway flags have been erected since that time. And there are two groups that are primarily responsible for their installation, the Sons of Confederate Veterans and a group known as the flaggers. In other words, a bunch of old white dudes who just won't move on. They buy up property near freeways, mostly in the South, and they plant gargantuan Confederate flags because white supremacy. It bears a huge resemblance to the gun debate, in my estimation. If reasonable people were allowed to talk this out, like reasonable people, it really wouldn't be the issue that it is today. But when you have special interest groups like the NRA, the Sons of Confederate Veterans, and the Daughters of the Confederacy, and the flaggers who are absolutely committed to upholding the status quo, they can sway the opinions of large groups of people or just the politicians who are elected to serve them, especially when they're as well-funded as many of these groups are. The flaggers, for instance, are a group of guys who mostly stand around and do stuff like this. Yes. Thank you for all that you have blessed us with and this heritage that you have given us. Look at that. 
<laughs> Look at that. But their Virginia chapter has over 100,000 Facebook followers. They mostly post a bunch of memes pushing lost cause propaganda and teaching children to make their very own Confederate battle flags. But they've managed to erect most of the flags that you see off Virginia highways. Yeah, they have money to do that and they're likely voting for a bunch of politicians who think your grandma's social security needs to be cut. So the next time you're driving through the Southern United States and you notice a gaudy, massive Confederate flag off the freeway, remember who left the welcome mat out for for you, the sons of Confederate veterans or your state's branch of the proud and noble flaggers. And don't fall for the okie doke about supposedly preserving a 150 year old Confederate heritage that lasted one third the length of the Grey's Anatomy series. The only reason that flag is still being waved is to remind passers by that these groups are still butthurt about not being able to own black people. Let's not forget that the primary reason that the Confederacy existed was to preserve the institution of Negro slavery and thereby uphold white supremacy and dominance. They said it out loud at the time, many times, and they're still saying it pretty loudly now. If you're in Philly or New York, I am coming your way and I would love to see you. Click the link in the bio or the caption for tickets.